Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Leslie, and Scott and I will be leading the music this morning. The music and readings for this Mass can be found on page 1246, 1246, in the back of your hymnal, or in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at this liturgy is Father Wilson Smith, and preaching is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is number 927, God is Here as We His People, number 927. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to call to mind and acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you provide us with abundance. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, too often we long for what does not satisfy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us so that we may feed others. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you. Give you thanks for your great glory. 
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, but you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion, thus will I test them, to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, I am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like horse frost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was, but Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. 
The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, curated in God's way, in righteousness and holiness of truth. The Word of the Lord.
does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowds saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Sunday, we began what is called the Bread of Life narrative in our Sunday readings. And if you looked carefully, you could see the shift. You would have noticed in last Sunday's Gospel that it was from John and not the usual Mark readings that we are pursuing in 2021. The Bread of Life readings are from the sixth chapter of John. And it's called the Bread of Life because it begins with the feeding of the 5,000 plus that we heard about last week, and then drills down on Jesus talking about himself as the living bread that has come down from heaven. In John's Gospel, Jesus is always in charge. In John's Gospel, we have a sense that the story as it is being told is later in telling than Matthew, Mark, or Luke. So it has a perspective of knowing those are out there and connecting to them. During the course of this year in other homilies, I've said also that John's version of the Last Supper is longer than others, with lots of explanation and commandment about washing feet. That will come later. And last night, we had two First Communions at our five o'clock Mass. So I do want to underscore that Jesus speaking on his body as real food and his blood real drink is so important that it helps rivet us into being disciples. The true body and blood of Jesus is about sharing love. And we have, we have to get to that point to really underscore what Eucharist is about. 
Now, you may remember with the, with the feeding of the 5,000 last week that Father Stu took you to a Coke factory in Atlanta. And he ended his homily by saying, as nice as Coca-Cola and its products are to explore and taste, the place where we come together for mass is the real tasting room. If you go further north from Atlanta, eventually you get to Pennsylvania. And there's another tour there, a tour with food. And the town's name gives away the product. Hershey, very good. See how good the branding is? <laughs> it is a good tour, too. But I want to take us into one of their commercials that is currently playing during the Olympics. Can you guess which one? It is the one tied to the game that you often see on TikTok and other websites. The one where you have a couple people together and they're competing and uh, when they answer the question, if they answer it right, they get to eat or drink or put a piece in place or take a piece out when the question is asked. It's a competition. You kind of follow that? Let me clarify it. You'll hear a question like, which of you is the faster runner? Or which of you is better looking? Or which of you is the better cook? And so forth. It's a competition. So do you know that? Okay. Uh, so this commercial, in this particular one, it has two precious little girls. And they are twins. They are identical twins, Olivia and Ava. Their task, as I said, and it is of Hershey's commercial, that they can eat a piece of the broken up Hershey's candy bar that is in front of them when they answer the question as true. So, first question they're asked, take a piece of chocolate if you are the tallest, and they both grab a piece. Remember, identical twins, so right on. Take a piece of chocolate if you are better at eating your vegetables and they both must be really great at eating their vegetables. They grab them. Take a piece of chocolate if you love sharing. And they both pause. And Olivia reaches for a piece and hands it to her sister, Ava. Commercials succeed for various reasons. You like them, or they bug you, or they are catchy, or they make you think. They force you to memorize jingles. So I'm not here to hawk chocolate, because chocolate doesn't really need hawking. But what I like about this commercial is the pause that refreshes Olivia loving on her sister Ava by sharing with her. From a Christian standpoint, when someone acts with compassion for another, it shows that they get what this is all about. So as we are into this bread of life narrative, the question that befalls us is, do you get this? Do you get that it's meant to impact your life and it's meant to help you to do things? It's to help you pause that moment and decide, how am I going to share this faith and what I believe? In our first reading from Exodus today, we have God's love for his people being made clearly evident. Now, the people are grumbling a bit. They're, they're, they're kind of wondering where their next meal is going to come from. But what God wants to give them is health. He wants to give them the food that they need. And so he provides them with bread. He provides them with quail. Now, if you paid close attention to the reading, you also understand that while God is giving this to them because he loves them and he doesn't want them to starve, they don't just get it. They have to do something for it. So in the morning when the manna falls, they have to go out and gather it up to feed each other. Or when the quail comes, they have to prepare it to give to each other. It is that constantly reminder that God is always giving us his love, but we have to act upon it. We have to, we have to do something to really receive it and make it part of who we are. Last night at the five o'clock, we had two young people who received their first communion. And anyone that's been preparing for first communion for this last year know that we have had these conversations about what it means to have Jesus come into your hearts. And the kids have been great about telling me 
what are they getting? They're, they're, they're getting Jesus' body and blood. They're getting it through the bread and wine. They're understanding that bread and wine become Jesus' body and blood, and then he gives it to us, and when we receive his body and blood, we become his body and blood. Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven. He is the bread of life. He wants us to grab that, to hold on to it, and to see it change our lives. Now, one of the things that I've also been talking to the kids about and their parents throughout this year is in John's Gospel, you have a long Last Supper narrative. You have this discussion that continues from this chapter 6 about understanding who Jesus is. But right at the beginning of it is when Jesus washes his disciples' feet. So what's become clearer to me as I've talked about this with them is this understanding that Jesus, who gives us his body and blood, who, who takes the bread after saying, this is my body, breaks it and gives it to us that we may become that, and takes the wine and says, this is my blood that we may become that, is trying to nourish us. He's trying to strengthen us. He's trying to make us ready to understand all the giftedness that he gives us. In the early part of this narrative, however, he begins by washing feet. And the important thing about foot washing that is different than the bread and wine changing is that while we have the miracle of this becoming Christ's body and blood, we have a commandment connected to the washing of feet. So Jesus, of course, is going around washing all the disciples' feet, and he stumbles on Peter, and Peter says, ain't no way you're doing this. And Jesus says, yes, way. And, and uh, he really lays it into Peter, and Peter says, well, then not my feet only. Give me a bath. Wash me completely. And Jesus says, you don't get this. You, you don't get what I'm doing, because you don't need to have a bath. You need to have your feet washed, meaning you have to learn to take care of one another. The commandment I give you is this, love one another, serve one another. It, it's not an optional part of Christianity, and it's not separated from the Eucharist. The understanding is that what we are being given by Christ's body and blood is the nourishment and strengthening that impels us to serve one another to care for each other, to give what is needed, and to help people realize that they are being given this gift of God. In our world today, as we are dealing with things like the pandemic, as we are dealing with harsh political realities, as we are dealing with socioeconomic realities, and find ourselves at odds with each other or on edge about anything that's going on, the invitation is still at the heart of Christianity to serve one another. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, I give you myself, it is the love of God that he is conveying to us. It is that power to understand that we are here to serve one another. And by serving one another, discover how God is intimately connected with us and loving us and loving us forward. And so that's what we are meant to share. You know, that moment that pauses, that clicks into our brain, what we do all the time when we come together for Eucharist sustains us, but we have to now go forward and share with one another, take care of one another. We have to be this loving life for one another. Let us pray that we will do so. Let us now stand and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to the one who sent Christ, the bread of life, into the world, we offer our prayers. The church leaders will be examples of honesty and faithfulness to the gospel, and that those who govern nations will seek ways to distribute the resources to our planet in just and fair ways. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, that in our words and deeds we may show the sincerity of our faith. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring an end to the crime and violence that is present in the streets of our city and help all to stand together to promote awareness, safety, and neighborhood unity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of domestic violence and for those who inflict pain on them. May they seek and receive the help they need. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The we may always appreciate the gift of the Eucharist. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be relieved of their pain and experience healing and wholeness. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially George Gobble, will be forever nourished by the bread of heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in prayerful silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life and love, your people cry out to you in their need. Hear our prayer, voiced in the name of your Son, the bread of life who sustains us on our pilgrimage. He is Lord forever and ever. Amen. As always, we thank you so much for your financial support of the ministries here at Old St. Mary's. Those of you joining us from home can mail in your contributions to the parish office or donate online by clicking on the Give button at oldstmarys.com. Thank you again for your generosity. Thank you. Song during the preparation of the gifts can be found at 1032, All Who Hunger, 1032. Be a welcome guest 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, Leslie. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption, through Christ our Lord. Friends, the uh, Paulus Father's Hope for the Future Capital Campaign continues. We just want to continue to thank all those who have made their pledge to date. Uh, you were, should have received a final mailing in the last week or so. For some, this was a duplicate, but we wanted to make sure that everyone received this letter from Father Eric, our president. Uh, your participation in our Paulist life, ministry, and mission is incredibly important to us and to uh, this community. Uh, and so we really hope to see our participation grow to 100%. Uh, thank you so much as you continue to pray about your response to that capital campaign. Uh, registration for this fall's Sunday Faith Formation classes is now open. There is an early enrollment discount. The bulletin has all the info that you need. Uh, also, the uh, Sacrament of Penance, we have moved that to 4 o'clock on Saturdays before the Mass. Uh, we hope that might be a more convenient time for you. Uh, so check that out. If you'd be willing to serve also as an usher, greeter, Eucharistic minister, uh, sacristan, or altar server, uh, or if you've been in one of those ministries, we really are still looking for people. So please uh, reach out to Scott Williams. Uh, his info is in the bulletin. Uh, and just let him know that you'd be interested in one of those ministries. We'd be so grateful to keep that going. Uh, a reminder uh, that all our Masses continue to be live streamed. Uh, you can also catch a rebroadcast anytime at YouTube. 
Uh, and this morning we have the American Red Cross blood drive uh, until 1 p.m. Uh, here at Old St. Mary's. So just to let you know that walk-ups are welcome for that if you'd like to donate blood. Thank you. Have a great week. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in the recessional number 1029, I am the bread of life, number 1029. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. <laughs>